So as always, closing our eyes. And please remember to mute your phones because we're hearing somebody screaming there and that definitely is a distraction. All right, let's try again. Scott leads the meditation to take two. <sighs> so closing our eyes, just dropping into breath. And really checking in with our bodies as we breathe. How do I feel? Can I let go of whatever I was thinking about or doing before class? Can I put those thoughts or that action aside? How's my body feel? Are there any places where there's tension? What are my emotions? Can my body sensations? And I invite us all to consciously imagine that together we are creating a very sacred container. We've been building this container since October. We've had new friends come and join us. And in this container, we've created safety, authenticity, vulnerability, and mutual respect. And as we're winding down this cycle, coming to very close to the end of this particular cycle of classes. Tonight, I invite us all to continue this beautiful journey we've been on of going deep into vulnerability. I'm gonna invite each of us tonight to identify a voice inside of us that longs to be heard. And as I speak, notice what comes to mind. Some of you may have already, right off the bat, the moment I said that, may have gotten a twinkling, an inkling of a part of you that really wants to be heard. All emotions are welcome. All voices are welcome. Sometimes we can find the voice inside of us that really wants to be heard through our shadow side. A part of you that perhaps acts out, maybe when you're under the influence and sometimes intoxication can be from drugs or alcohol. Sometimes exactly. intoxication is from sexual stimulation. Sometimes we get intoxicated with rage and anger at what's going on in the world. That's another form of intoxication. But underneath, when we get intoxicated, often we can find a voice longing to be heard, a part of ourself longing to be acknowledged or to express itself. And sometimes it takes that intoxication to make it safe, it gives us the excuse to express ourselves or to act out a certain way. It's never bad or wrong. That part of us, that voice might make choices that has hurtful consequences. And we have to look at that and accept it. But the voice, the subpersonality is no, never ever bad or wrong. Just like a parent that loves all of their children, even the child that has behaviors that are hurtful, 
the parent still loves that child. So I invite us all to love whatever child within us, whatever voice within us, whatever part of us is longing to be heard. And tonight, if you wish, that voice, that part of you is gonna have a chance to express itself and be honored, heard, absolutely not judged, but embraced, accepted, acknowledged, honored. So now I'm gonna be quiet for a couple of minutes and allow you to reflect on my words, dive deep and find that part of you that you are willing to share with the group tonight. Take as much time as you need, but when you have the voice, the subpersonality in mind, open your eyes and then I can see where people are. All right, thank you. So we may have time for everyone to share in the large group, or I or we may choose to break up into smaller pods. That's a choice that we have. So I'm gonna ask by raise of hands, for you to pick, raise your hand only once, <laughs> okay? Choice number one is for us to really stay in group, but everyone is gonna have to express themselves for a shorter period of time. That's choice number one. Choice number two is to break up into pods, probably three pods, so that there's time to go deeper. Um, or choice number three is you're okay either way. You really don't have a strong preference, okay? So you only vote once. <laughs> and I'm not going to vote because I don't want to influence people. So who would like to stay in group recognizing there'll be less time? Okay, thank you. So I counted six hands. Who would like to break up into smaller pods where there'd be more time? <laughs> Angel, you only get one vote. Okay, and who is on the fence? Either way is okay. Okay, staying in group is where we are. Um, so, uh, who would be willing to share first? And I'm going to kind of do a timer and try and keep us to try and keep your share and then our reflection to about five minutes per person. So Patsy's going to go first. And Patsy, for you and everybody else, after you've shared, let us know what you'd like. Would you like reflection, empathy, celebration? Let us know. Each of you gets to choose. You know, I'd really love understanding. I'd really love some reflections. I'd really love some celebrations. Okay? So Patsy, I am putting the spotlight on you. I think that I, just at start, I, I would appreciate reflection, but if anybody has anything else, that's okay too. And I guess I noticed it when I was watching the last class and what I was noticing with people sharing their traumas. And I, it all began to loosen for me a little bit. I tend to separate 
old traumas in little compartments. But for some reason, maybe it's just the duration of this class, they've kind of flowed together and with a little bit of distance, um, I'm able to draw parallels with my behavior. And I've been able to chart, particularly since watching this last class, where I learned my behavior to, um, to uh, betray myself. When I was a very little girl, I was about three. We had a housekeeper who used to slap my hands till they turned red. And then when my mom came home, she would tell me if the, I told my mom the truth that she would leave. But see, this was the only lady who was around. My mom was gone all the time. So I betrayed myself and I told my mom that no, she wasn't hitting my hands. Meanwhile, later when I was a little older, I found out that my mom knew all along. So I can, I can trace the behavior of when I agreed as a little girl to betray myself for my own safety. And that's what I've been working so hard to unearth. It, it manifested in self-destructive behavior a little bit and with um, experimental with drugs, living in San Francisco and all. But letting go of Kevin has left me um, single and face-to-face um, -face with my sense of safety. And I can chart that now he's gone and I'm, I'm safe. It's been four months. I'm, I'm totally safe. I'm fine. But I've been able to, with the distance, figure out where that unsafety came from. And that's where it came from. So I've had to show compassion to myself, which I learned in this class. And then when Scott said last week about when you're a little kid and you've had trauma, there's a flip side that happens as well. There's a manifestation or a behavior of the opposite being true. Mm. So I think that's kind of all I have. Mm. Um, I am in celebration of um, the support needed to be able to trace that all the way back and to heal, try to heal. Mm. Let's please all twinkle, Patsy. And I would love to open it up to two or three of you. She kept it to three minutes, so we've got, I figured it out, we've got about seven minutes per person for what they share and for reflection time. So I'd love to open it up to three of you or so to offer empathy or reflection. And each person try and keep it to under a minute, okay? Who'd like to go first? Mandy. Hi, Pat. Hi. I just, hey, want, I just want to send you my love. And, and can I invite you to just close your eyes for a minute? Put your hand on your heart. And I just want to send you love to your inner child and to your adult self. Uh, I, I just, I feel so much empathy for your situation and your inner child pain that you felt being harmed physically by this woman who was in your environment and guilted, guilted into keeping silent. And um, I just wanted to say how and I'm sorry for your experience, but I'll also empathize that your adult self felt harmed when you found out your mother knew all along. So I just, I'm so sorry. And I, I send you love and I send you empathy and compassion to both your inner child and your adult self. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mandy. It's beautiful. Uh, Allison. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thanks. Okay. I'm I, um, I traveled with you back into that very dark place. Um, and I just want you to know that 
<laughs> you don't have to go there alone anymore because you've shared all of that with us. There's this, you're surrounded with a circle of caring people who will go back with you there so you don't have to be there by yourself. Okay. So I just want you to know you're never going to be alone there again. And also, I just wanted to say I could imagine that it, was, it, it must be hard to trust yourself when you feel that you've betrayed yourself. It must be really scary to do things that are filled with risk in your life, which is most of the big decisions because of those experiences. Um, and I imagine that that feels really scary. And I'm wondering... I'm wondering if sometimes putting words to the darkness, being able to express it, I wonder if that helps it feel a little less overwhelming. I'd love to hear what you feel about the experience of sharing with the group. It feels really good to be seen because as these pieces have come together, they've only happened in the quiet of my heart. Yeah just an awareness as if a little puzzle piece shifted into place. And isn't it amazing that you can actually kind of see the picture once the puzzle piece is in place, everything else kind of comes into focus. I just want to encourage you to keep looking at the picture now. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Uh, we're at the seven minute mark, so um, we're going to move on to the next person. But thank uh -huh. you, Allison and Mandy, for your beautiful sharing and empathy. And thank you, Patsy, for getting us off to an amazing start, taking us so deep. So big twinkling to Patsy and Allison and Mandy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hmm. Who would like to go next? Okay, Deborah Haviland. Mine is, um, what came up is, is my ideal <laughs> sub personality. And yet the discrepancy between where I am now and what I'm always imagining. So my ideal is called the beloved. And I am in that life, I, or sub personality, I am happy, fulfilled, I am married to my true beloved and I'm living in my ideal home, in my ideal area, and I'm an international speaker, retreat leader, and I've written several books and with the help of a ghostwriter and have made a video about my vision quests where people claim their ideal lives that they dream of and some examples of noble on purpose lives where they're they're already literally doing it and you know the the discrepancy is that i don't have my <laughs> that i don't have my husband or my ideal home like this is my dream and so i'm always wondering like what really is in the way of it how come it hasn't come sooner all the other times in my life it came right away you know if i broke up with somebody the next person was right there um, and right now I'm facing a big, huge, huge life-changing challenge of um, feeling like I can't afford to live where I'm currently living, and I'm not really sure where I can afford to live around here. So I went to Florida and found a really gorgeous two-bedroom, two-bath mobile home in a 55 and older community and started the process of buying it. And I'm noticing I'm really embarrassed to tell people, like, what will, what will they think? Moving to Florida? You know, it's cool to move to Asheville, North Carolina, but is it, and yet I have people there and my Sufi teacher and job opportunities and, but you know, it's daunting to move, daunting. And I wake and I still can turn it around and not do it. So I'm caught between two worlds. Okay, thank you. So I'm hearing, of course, two pieces. The part of you, 
So it's the beloved and it's the um, what's wrong with me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to respond? Give, and would you like empathy, advice? <laughs> We've got three. I think I'd like, I think I'd like reflections, insights, okay. Any, okay. anything you feel like sharing. But, but for me, insights, I wish I could speak to an astrocartographer too. <laughs> um, okay, so Mimi and then Jessica. Hi, beautiful. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm, I too, I recognized your breath, your breathing. So just placing your hand over your heart for me in the same way that Mandy was just having Patsy do that. And I really would like to hold this reflection for you. Um, your courage at shifting and recognizing that the place that you're in is no longer um, where you're resonating and that you have a full easy yes for your next location. And that the reflection that I saw was when you're in full easy yes is when things align for you. Is that accurate? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so, so I really celebrate living like after, after going 40 days without sunshine here in Indiana. I really celebrate that you're moving to Florida. Yeah, and I that. Live, I live in a huge guest room now instead of living in this crowded place. All exactly. Yes. Yes. So I see like you lighten up there and I see like that that's where you come into your fullness is when you're in a full easy yes. And that the dissonance that that I'm hearing and that I'm seeing in your body is that uh, you weren't able to receive where you are. And it's beautiful to just give that some tenderness and a really beautiful goodbye. Yeah. More of that breath. Wow. Thank you. Because that's as gonna. As oh. you say that, I'm going like, and around the corner is an old <laughs> swimming pool, and I can exactly. sunshine, a warm ocean, and it's like Ma a Maui that I can afford. Right, exactly. So I am a full celebratory yes for your moving forward into your space and your full ownership, and and knowing you that how easy things line up for you when you're in that space. Thank you, Mimi. Awesome feedback. Okay. Good job, Mimi. Good job. Um, Jessica. <sighs> Hi, Deborah. Hi. Um, I, I'm good. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined our group. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And I, you know, what I was going to ask was very similar, actually, to what Radiance had to offer, which was, um, well, slightly different. Just that... Um, how do you, in bridging the gap between this sub-personality that you would love to step into in your future to where, from where you are right now, how does it feel when you think about bridging that gap here versus Florida or other places? Great question. So, you know, I, I, the other place was to move to Marin, but it's so expensive and hunting for rentals where I get the space and by by going there where i can buy this double wide you know huge spit mobile home where i'm inheriting all of this gorgeous furniture and art and have a lake view and a swimming pool and the da, 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 and it's right near sarasota when i where i lived in my 30s i'm realizing you know everything i can get more in shape swim more dance more um my Ayurvedic teacher told me that I was going to meet, she really channeled to me in front of the room, girlfriend, you are going to meet a Pitta who's got a sailboat, who's like, just vibrates the way you vibrate. And I just feel like it's probably Florida. And yet I just can't believe I'm doing it. So I guess it, I resonate with, oh, I, and the other thing is that my Sufi teacher is inviting me to work with his healing clinics there in, in Safety Harbor. So I have, I feel like I have more work there. Like there I can do body work. The, my landlady told me I couldn't do any body work here. I can't even work where I live right now. And so everything will be cheaper and more job opportunities. So as a reflection, 
everything that you're saying sounds <laughs> rad, right? Everything that you're saying sounds awesome. So, I mean, you know, if you needed that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it sounds to me, honestly. I and I, with anxiety, like you wouldn't believe it. More than I've ever so, so, Deborah, I am going to come in because I want us to move forward. But it sounds to me like you're really looking for approval. You're looking for us to be able to say, yes, good choice. And go back, watch the video and see how lit up you are as you talk about all of this. And remember that we don't need more light workers in Marin County. We need more light workers in Florida. It's a swing state. It's a big, it's a swing state. <laughs> so, um, you know, wherever we're drawn, right? I mean, we have to, that's the whole point is learning not to do what's the cool thing to do because who knows what the hell cool is anyway. That's just a concept, right? But when life is clearly, like when you talk about your furniture and the Sufi teacher, and I mean, it's, you've made, it sounds to me like life ha is pointing a very clear direction for you. And so if you just need us to say, yes, we still love you. You can still participate. You're still part of our world. You got it. Okay. So it's all Twinkle Deborah. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Angel, is that you wanting to go next? Cool. And, um, you know, real quickly before, because I know that, uh, um, Cat, also known as Chris, came in a little bit late. Debbie, if I put you and Cat in a breakout room, do you want to just kind of bring her up to date with what we're doing? Would you be willing to do that? Okay. So I'm putting the spotlight on you, Angel, and I'm going to create a breakout room just for Cat and Debbie. Hi, everyone. Um, first, I just wanted to actually had a little inquiry for <clears throat> for Deborah. If, if you're open to just a question on what you shared. Um, what I, what arose for me in terms of your sharing and then the point got brought up around, you know, is, is what you're looking for kind of like approval that you're making the right uh, question, the right decision. Um, as wondering for you, just, uh, just, I don't need an answer. I'm not looking for an answer, but just for an inquiry for you is how good are you at receiving what you want? Mm. So that's, that's my little pointer for you, perhaps. So, Perfect question. Um, yeah. So my, my sub personality that always comes up first, first and foremost for me when I think about my sub personalities is something I used to be called as a kid by my, my family was Mr. What About Me. So Mr. What About Me is probably like five years old and I guess the you know, the, uh, the universal needs are to feel seen and heard, um, to feel considered. Uh, essentially, I think what happened at around age five was my grandfather moved in to live with us. And my grandfather was very traditional. And basically, I just remember him saying, you know, children are to be seen and not heard. Mm. And so this and he kind of insisted on that in, in many different forms. Um, and so, yeah, this is something I've struggled with a lot, a lot throughout my life is this seed of being, of having to restrain my voice, having to, um, feeling like I can't ask for my needs. I can't voice my needs. And so how that shows up, right, is when I don't ask for my needs, then I come across as very needy. <laughs> um, and so that, that might be the, you know, the challenge for me is neediness, my own neediness. Um, and also as it shows up often in my adult relationships is my resistance to my partner's neediness and needs. I have a difficult time responding to their needs because 
you know, I've been, my needs have been shut down and, and put as last priority, um, both by myself and, and probably more by myself than others, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, Mr. What About Me is, you know, frustrated and upset and, and also shows up as the giver, right? Instead of the receiver. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get my needs met. So I, my strategy as a kid was to say, well, okay, I don't have any needs. They're not going to, they don't matter. They, it, other people's needs are more important. So try to uh, win attention, inclusion, belonging by, by meeting other people's needs and being nice and kind and helpful to others. Um, and, you know, that's a strong pattern in my adult life, of course, you know, being a healer, a counselor, a, a giver, uh, a loyal partner, all of these things. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. And I'm, I'm very aware of Mr. What About Me. Um, and he still exists. Uh, and, yeah, shows up, you know, very much in that um, resistance. Uh, it shows up more as a resistant personality now in terms of, you know, if my partner would like a massage, you know, I'm like, eh, no, I don't want to do that. Why don't you give me one first, you know? Um, so it becomes, you know, and some of my relationships become more transactional. You know, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. Um, because Mr. What About Me needs to be considered, needs to receive first. Um, and yeah, and in conversations, I notice that, you know, being interrupted is a huge trigger for me, like really a very, very strong trigger for me so that need to be heard and to allow, have my voice be heard just because my grandfather and an environment when I was a child said, no, children aren't supposed to be heard, only seen. Yeah. yeah. Would you like, first of all, big twinkling, that was amazing, <laughs> thank you. And I'm wondering if you would like empathy, reflections, or if you would like to state, this is just a thought, mm. would you really not need it? Like, what would it be mm. like for Mr. What About Me to say, I yeah. need this and I want yeah. that? Is that yeah. something you'd be willing to do? Yes, yes, yes. Um, what I'd like to state and claim, <laughs> I'm just noticing even the slight hesitation right there, right, is my needs matter. Yes. My needs matter. Yes. I deserve to have my needs met. Yes. By others as well as myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mm. That, feels, that feels much better. <laughs> We got a couple minutes left. I'm giving like seven minutes per person. Does anybody want to? Would you like reflection, empathy? Yeah, I'm open to reflections. Yeah. Okay. Reflections more than empathy. I don't think it's anything I'm too concerned okay. about. Okay. Who'd like to? Who has a reflection? Maybe can relate. Um, anybody want to? Daniel. Wow, Angel. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I felt like I was talking, especially the part about being triggered when I get interrupted. And, um, and that's specifically related to the shadow or the subpersonality of mine that, um, that really thinks my needs don't matter. Yeah, I can just totally relate to you, Angel. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, brother. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Time for one more. Uh, Allie. Hey, can y'all hear me all right? We sure can. Okay. Yeah, Angel, I, I totally relate to that too. And Daniel, it felt like y'all were telling my story. And one thing I've had to work on lately, and I'd like to invite you, Angel and Daniel, and, any, and all of us who need to, just put your hand on your heart and tell yourself either out loud or in your mind, self-love is not selfishness. <laughs> I had that mixed up for so many years that if I even thought of myself, that's to be selfish. And I was taught that's like the worst thing on earth. 
So, you know, the saying self-love is not selfishness. And really repeat that till you start to believe it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> I just couldn't resist. So hold on a second. There's something I'm going to show. If you take a quick look at the share screen. Uh, Hannah made some memes for me, which I appreciate. And this is one of them she made for me. You're all able to see that. Self-love is not selfish. <laughs> the more we care for ourselves, the more we have to give to others. So, and that's me looking at Allie. Uh, that kind of looks like you, Allie. Thank you very much. Big twinkling again for Angel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who'd like to go next? Who's up next? Don't be shy. I'll call on you. Going once. I'm going to call on someone. Okay, Mimi. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Okay. Um, I think you can hear me. Okay. So thank you, Angel. Ah, uh, I felt that all the way into my gut. So thank you for that. Um, this is like, I have a story around this, but what I'd really like to be seen in is this voice that I've kept quiet since I was a kid because of, um, and it's the God self. And in this idea that I'm with a partner who is um, rightly, uh, um, horrified and so okay first of all i really like like um high level mathematics high level um i also i already noticed like defending myself here but high level mathematics high level quantum theory and like super um theologian based spirituality across the board like i love studying all of that that's that's my wheelhouse so for me, there's this, there's this yuck factor of um, what of churches and the, the churchiness of this conversation, but there's a whole presence of me that I feel is this God essence and Christ consciousness, and it's directly tied to my sexuality. And I feel like I get tiny glimpses of it and I live with an atheist and a very strict atheist who is repulsed by the idea, uh, by any idea or any conversations around the, the Christ consciousness or any of those like conversations. So, uh, so like the, the, what about me is like the, is ex exactly that voice angel of the, I have just worked, I have been in a place of endlessly helping to be one of the first people to hear people's fullness and celebrate that. And like, I, like there's this bitterness and there's this vindictiveness of what the fuck about me? And like, there's, it was gorgeous. Um, I think I'm just going to choose breathing here <laughs> because I realize I have a lot of story around it that probably doesn't need to be there anymore. So um, what I would really love is um, breath with it and a beautiful reflection around it and just the celebration of it. That's what I would like. So... I just want a little more definition, kind of bringing it into the subpersonality. So we can really celebrate you. Would you be willing to give that part of yourself a name? Oh, that's, tell... that's the radiance. Yeah, radiance. Okay, okay. Yeah. so radiance. Yeah. Yes. And would you be willing to claim your virtues, claim the incredible gifts that you have that you've given to the world and specifically what you long for? Probably, uh, can I just go with longing for? Yeah, I, would like, I would love to have the reflections of what are the gifts, but the, um, the longing for is 
uh, to hear it sung to me, like to really um, I don't have anything more than that. So to have it sung to you, seeing your radiance, but really celebrating your magnificent radiance, the, the extraordinary love, and that specifically your sexual energy is so connected to your spiritual energy. And to really be celebrated that Yes, you are a sexual being and you're a spiritual being. And it is the beautiful infusion of those two that is radiant and beautiful right. and right. magnificent. Not, exactly, not repulsive. Right. No, it's beautiful. Who else would like to celebrate that? Deborah, and then Allison, and then Angel. Uh, I just want to celebrate you as a woman that knows God, mm -hmm. God is and all that is, the divine, the spirit inside, that that is pouring through your body, your blood vessels, your, that sings to you. Right now, I'm not sure if my voice would sing it perfectly, but this, <laughs> I, I, mean, I have a little thing in my voice that I'm fixing, but I would, just love you are so beautiful and i really do want it to be okay that when you're making love and you're coming you can go oh god 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 oh my god oh my god it's ecstatic i love god i love the divine and i'm okay and i want my lover to accept this i i deserve it i it's so important beautiful thank you deborah good beautiful beautiful <laughs> Uh, Allison and then Angel. Hi, Mimi. I I feel like we're definitely got some sister from another mister things going on here. Um, but I just wanted to, first of all, really um, connect with you because um, I'm married to an atheist as well. Um, and I am... I would say agnostic most days. <laughs> when things get really bad, I verge on atheism, but my father used to say that he believed in God only when he heard late Beethoven string quartets. Um, he had, you know, you, we have, a, and the point of me saying that is we all have our places where we look for the divine, right? Where we find it. And when you find it and you can find it within yourself, that is so beautiful and precious because it reminds us that we all carry a light within ourselves that we can use to illuminate, illuminate the way for ourselves and for others as well. And I just wanna celebrate the light that you bring because it's so obvious and so palpable. And every time I see you on the screen, your little area of the screen just lights up. <laughs> you have this incredible aura of, of magical, uh, energy and I don't even know how to describe it and you know this is from your friend who's like agnostic humanist so um, I, I, I can feel it I can feel this I think one of the things that I want to encourage you to, to do is I feel like that's a place of power in you and I think by denying it and pushing it down it's also kind of pushing away your power and your ability to have a voice and that makes me feel very sad because you have so much to say. You have so much to give. And I don't want you to take a pillow over the face of your divinity and stifle it, because I think it is amazing. And whenever I'm around you, it gets me all excited about possibilities because you have this key into some sort of infinite possibility in your own psyche that I can see very clearly. I hope I'm making sense. I'm. Uh, I'm a bit of a run on sentencer, but I, I just wanted you to know that like, I'm I, like, I think I'm maybe one of the most spiritually skeptical people that I've met <laughs> and yet I see it. So if someone like me can totally see it and it's obvious, then you can bet that's important. And it's so important that you share it and be allowed to come into the power that you're holding in that energy. So I just want to celebrate that energy and I'm going to send you 
like some sisterly solidarity. I'm, right now I'm next to you on the screen, so I'm just gonna reach over, whoosh, and give you some. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. We're almost to 10 minutes for Mimi. Okay. Yeah, we're um, good. So Angel, just very brief, if you can keep her just like laser, that would be great, please. Oh, dear Radiance, you are the rays that dance through the universe. You don't have to rehearse because your natural sexuality is what lights up all you and me. Your spirit is so bright, it's all perfectly right. Your sexuality is strong and welcome. Carry yourself home because your pleasure is God's pleasure, and God's pleasure is your pleasure. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Beautiful. Big twinkling. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Just a reminder, when we are commenting, let's try and keep it to 60 seconds so we don't have to repeat ourselves. We can be laser, let's see how laser angel was, those lasers. So let's just try and remember that so we can give everybody equal time, okay? Um, and everybody, you've all been amazing. So there's no criticism, but they're just moving things forward. Who'd like to go next? Who's ready to share their, their voice, their, their inner peace, their little that part of you that's longing to be celebrated the way that Mimi and Deborah and Angel have? I'll call in someone on a problem. Can't hear you. Okay. I, I saved are. somebody from being called on, so I thought <laughs> I was trying to come up with it. So I have a few things. Um, uh, one, as, as I was listening to it, I was like, I want to feel safe to be happy, to be joyful. But it's because, you know, growing up, it was just never safe, right? To have that joy, you have to be careful that the other people around you were joyful, right? So I think I have that, not that I don't have joy, I have joy, but just that really deep, there's, I think, a fear when I'm really joyful, like something else could happen, right? And, um, and that I am enough, I guess. I'm, I guess I could have, like, uh, I'm the feeling of my subpersonality of not being enough, not being good enough, not being a good enough musician, not being a good enough singer, not being, you know, just enough, you know. And I have a shame quality. And, and um, what's really happened these days, guys, is I fell in love. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It, it's it's kind of like, like, and um, at a gig, you know, and I was looking, remember, I was always looking for a sound man, like, where's my sound man, meaning sound man, but play on words meaning sound like a sound dude, right? So he showed up and he showed up big time at my last gig at uh, Lori Grace's, a tantric house, right, Scott? Yeah. And, um, and like, it was just one of those, you know, like you're looking at each other's eyes and it's just that just was it right there and um and it's really somebody who's available who's super into me who's can communicate nonviolent communication all these things are like it's happening and and i feel the fear in that come up for me and then i feel the it was easier to be with someone on the you know, I see it feel more that available quality of, you know, this what call it. This is a subpersonality of, uh, how would it be like? Now that I have love, what am I going to do with it? Sort of thing, right? Like it's so like he wants to meet me, he's right there. It's everything is happening and it's gorgeous, and I see where, um, and it's new beginnings. It's new, but I see where there's. I have a shame of like I can see when it's somebody that's so into me. There's like things I want to. I've just never saw my parents being happy and being in a happy relationship. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's some shame when I'm really with somebody who's really into me. I have shame around that. 
and I don't quite get it. Like, but uh, that's there, and that's really um, confounding, you know. And I've had this before, and um, being totally accepted and totally it's okay. Like, I feel also kind of since this person ha happens to be a really high level musician, I do feel kind of like, oh fuck, man, you know, I'm not good enough somewhere, you know, for that. And, um, and, but just this, like, also things that, well, will we have fun together? Will my friends like him? You know, will he be, you know, and it, I don't know. It's like, I make it, I create some shame thing for myself. And it's kind of a deep thing. It's like really deep and, and um, disconcerting, actually. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Is that, and I'll take whatever you want to give. <laughs> I'll take some empathy. <laughs> well, and, I, um, yes, Scott, I yeah. just have, first of all, I think we're all, I think we're all celebrating celebrate. with you. Celebrate, celebrate, huge. Yeah, so yeah. yes, first of all, a big <laughs> yes, all right? Yeah. And as long as he loves yeah. you well, we all love him, He's so, so that's like, clear. solid. But, yeah. so in the, in the spirit of subpersonality, I've kind of been trying to I'm sort out, enough. and the word that's coming to my mind is questioning. Are you able to hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, questioning. Uh -huh. the, okay, the, the, the internet is a little shaky. I don't know if it's on my end or yours, mm -hmm. but I'm hearing a questioning within you. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, I've gone so long where I was with a guy who wasn't, able to meet me the way I wanted to be met. Mm -hmm. And now the questions are coming up. How will other people respond? Is, you know, how's it, you know, all the questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would that be accurate if I were to say it's kind of your questioning subpersonality that's, that's, yeah, that's coming yeah, up? Yeah, questioning, questioning subpersonality and like Angel said, so you said maybe, am I, am I worthy of love? Worth being worthy of love. Um, you know, it's this, it's this, it's this quality of like when somebody is like the, if somebody's really into me, like I, and really present, then there's something that's not missing. You know, what I mean, like looking for that, like never enough, maybe also, right? right. Maybe that, right. that's a shameful thing. Like that person, like here he is, all his heart on his, like so, like, I mean, I can't tell you what I needed with communication. My last relationship was hard for him to send me almost half an emoji you know and 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 <laughs> and this guy he suddenly meets me in this romantic loving words presence saying totally his heart like we can just relate on this deep heart sharing vulnerable level which i've learned of course being with you scott that i can and and as we were meeting i was actually like wow okay i'm we could really come up with the fears and oh and i've been feeling i remember saying this to him when we were just connecting and i was like wow you know i've been having this really sadness in my heart you know of, of like wondering if i was ever going to meet anybody again and i would never have said that ever when i'm just meeting somebody and we're looking at each other's eyes and we're just you know scott so i thought that was just kind of breakthrough moments for just really being really a vulnerable and 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 he said me too, <laughs> oh, me too, you know, and so, yeah, but that never enough sort of maybe peace and the worthiness and, and somehow, you know, I just never saw my parents having a good time together. And that's so important. Like how do I have a good time with friends together? That is such a, um, it's easy to be together one-on-one. -on -one. And we met in a group of people, but, but still, I'm just on a really deep level, just the, the quality of how do I socialize with this person that I'm really into? Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. The questioning, yeah. And then not making it like not enough. That's right. probably it. Yeah. So just in time. Yes. We've got like a minute. Does anybody, are you wanting empathy, reflection? What would you like from somebody right now? Reassurance? I, Oh, yeah, reassurance. I like a little celebration just because mm -hmm. it's such a huge, it's been on a- Let's all celebrate a, right now. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yes, 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 yes. Big celebration. 
I mean, it's a gift, you yeah. know. I, actually, yeah, it's a gift. So to give okay. them. Okay. And some maybe reassurance, something maybe about the not being enough stuff. Yeah, somebody so who, does somebody want to address that? Uh, okay, uh, Deborah. Not enough for the shame. Yeah. You know, I just want to say you are so enough. You, uh, first of all, celebrations, big celebrations. This is awesome, awesome, and that he's in the same field yeah. as you, and that he recognizes you and is saying that he loves you. And I would say, inhale, you know, oh boy, let it in. Just say thank you very much, brain. We're like letting you have a one-way trip ticket to Bali. And right now I'm going to really let this love in. Mm -hmm. And when you said, how am I going to socialize with him? Oh, as you breathe and relax, I would say just one day at a time. You don't have to have it all mm -hmm. planned out. He's going to, I just get that he's going to match and pace with you that you are just totally okay. You are so okay. You're, you're so beautiful. You are not your mother and your father. <laughs> you really are Anuprabha. Mm -hmm. You have so much beauty. Mm -hmm. So many sparkles, like you're, the sparkles around you right now. And this person wants to be with you. This person has been looking for someone too. So keep, when you're with him, just remember deep, slow, breathing really stay with your breath and hit your know, hands on your heart and even right now maybe hands on your heart and just saying to myself i am totally enough i'm i'm a good catch i'm a wonderful wonderful woman you've loved so many people done so much seva raised beautiful children managed your home and lifestyle as a trooper. Mm, thank you, Deborah. Thanks, Deb. You're beautiful. Mm. You know, a reminder for those of you who don't get a chance to speak, because everybody is sharing so beautifully, use the chat box, right? You know, use the chat box. I want to try and give everybody a chance to to give and take, to receive. So you can all use the chat box, celebrating Anna Prabha. Um, and you know, thank you. And I think it's interesting, Deborah, that you, because in a way, you and Anna Prabha have a similar thing. There's a big change taking place in your life. There's a pretty clear path. I mean, clearly life is lighting the way with you for Florida, with her for her, her new guy. And of course, questions come up because change is challenging. Change brings up questions. So interesting mirroring there between the two of you. Welcome back, Chris. Welcome back, Debbie and Christopher. Uh, who would like to share their subpersonality or their inner voice that wants to be heard next? Who hasn't gone that we can still hear from? And I will call on people if you don't, if we don't get somebody. So, and everybody who shared so far has been beautiful. Great, thank you, Jessica. You're up. Hello. Um, so, I I really I I caught up on the Saturday video um, today, and so everything that was shared really spoke to me a lot. Um, I actually did a lot of, it wasn't named subpersonality work, but I did a lot of subpersonality work last week. And so I feel like there are these aspects of self that are up and are changing and are in the mode of sort of turning over new leaves after, you know, this lifetime of being entrenched in certain ideas. Um, one place that I noticed myself reenacting the same patterns today was uh, I worked all day really hard and I didn't eat. <laughs> I, I did drink water and, and things. So, so that was great. And that's like a big, you know, that's good. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> the win. And so what happens is that I'll just, I, I work super hard. And then on the flip side of the subpersonality, I will do my best to avoid work. And so I really resonated with some of the shares that happened on Saturday as well, just as far as like, oh, I get that this part of me that's extremely driven and extremely product oriented needs a balance point. And wow, look at all of these ways that I choose to check out. And wow, look at, look at these things that I think are such a problem for me and I judge really hard you know, because I don't like some of the behavior patterns, like maybe watching too much television or I, I, that's the one that comes to mind, but like I'll, I'll totally avoid having a body all day long and, and just completely like not listen to any of those signs and signals, which I've done my entire life. And in some ways it's really served me because I do have type one diabetes. So a lot of the signals I actually do need to ignore because like, there are, you know, in a way it's given me peace of mind when my body is uncomfortable. Um, like I don't need to buy into everything, but I do recognize this sort of teeter totter that happens of me separating from my body in order to just be very productive and then leaning way back into the other side of being like of, of just needing to shut down and so one of the celebrations i think is just recognizing that when i shut down it's because i haven't engaged myself to relax in a way that might feel healthier for me um so that's a that's a big that's a big deal I think for me, it's not just like judge, shame, guilt. I can't believe you just binged watch that. Like it's late, go to bed, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Like, no, it's because my brain needed to just not be active in that moment. So I think it allows a little bit more space for empathy for myself. And I really do feel like my life is changing and I'm frustrated that it hasn't yet. <laughs> I mean, it, it is. And, uh, you know, the brain always works faster than reality. So that's unfortunate. But uh, <laughs> I am doing my part and it will change eventually. And it is okay. And that I struggled with that today. You know, okay, so that happens. So I have tomorrow, I can get off the call and I will make myself dinner. You know? <laughs> I may exercise. I can make up for it. It's all right. So that's that's kind of where I'm at today. It's just like recognizing all of these things. So. Mm. Thank you. That's Twinkle. Um, and I I want to say that I have a very similar thing. I have what I call extraordinary Scott and there's ordinary Scott, and the two are so connected. And I've I've done coaching work on myself. And it goes all the way back to my childhood. I'm mean, like little childhood, like to the degree that I was doing something to be great, which was really important to me in my ego. There would be the flip side that I then just wanted to go play with my toys or I just wanted to go do something really ordinary. And so I just can relate to that part of it. It's like the more we expend, then the more we just want to, whatever it may be. I just want to get high. I just want to drink. I just want to watch Netflix. I just want to veg out. I just want to go to the movies, whatever our form of relaxation might be. So I totally believe. I'm curious who else can relate to what Jessica has shared. <laughs> we have time for, for one, two quick shares or one slightly longer share. Um, who'd like to... Uh, ex uh, Mimi? Okay. I just wanted to ask, how would you like to be seen? Oh, I'm open. I'm open. Okay. Uh, way to go for taking your major breaks. And really quickly, one quick thing that I heard from Matt Kahn, and that was when, in, when you're like in that, I just watched 40 hours worth of television, to uh, put out the gratitude of and May... One million people know what deep rest is about today because I got to experience it for myself. So the minute that you do it, that you just blessed a million other people to do it 
as well. So, so you just gave that to everybody. Um, so that really helps me on my times when I, when I do a timeout. So I see you there and I adore you there. Thank you. Way to do it all. Thank you, Mimi. And you were nice and brief. So we've got time for one more quick little blast of love, empathy, reflection, anybody else? Uh, okay, Deborah, just brief though. Super brief. Um, one, I just can't help but mention that you have a very ecstatic laugh. I would love to explore your laughter more because it seems like it's both ecstatic and it may lead to a deeper part of yourself if we could travel with it. Um, and secondly, I just would love to invite you to explore, you know, your, your relationship with your body. Like, like, how can I love my body today? What would be the nutrition or exercise that it really needs to create balance? And thank you for sharing. It really, you, it, it's wonderful to get to know you. I really, you know, your laughter is ecstatic and it's very present. <laughs> <laughs> I have ecstatic laughter too. So, um, you know, I, I just accept everything that you said and um, gosh, we're all on this journey together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you very much, Jessica. And yes, I think that Jessica and Mimi should have a laugh off contest, right? Because they both have these incredible infectious laughs that are pretty amazing. So thank you. Uh, Kat, you're up. Yeah, yeah, hi. Um, I was trying to think of, you know, exactly how that, um, how this works for me, you know, the sub-personality. And um, what I've kind of come to is that um, somewhere when I was young, I think I, I got the idea that it wasn't, it wasn't safe to be myself. And so, um, you know, as I've gotten older, I've, I've found, uh, you know, varieties of situations, whether it be work or with friends or family, um, where I had to be this persona or that persona because that was appropriate for the place and the people and the situations. And, um, and interestingly, I, uh, my dad gave me this book when I was little and it, it, was, it was called Why I'm Afraid to Tell You Who I Am. And I was a little kid. I was like, what's this garbage? I had no idea what it was, you know, and I was, it was just a book all about, you know, uh, these concepts where you, you have a part of you that you just don't feel like you can share it's like you like you keep your feelings um coveted into yourself and i find myself i still do that today and um and how i do that so that i don't feel judgment is i bring the the parts of me and they're authentic parts of me but i bring them to the situations and i leave the other parts behind because they are not they don't work for that group or for that situation you know like there's there's people that that find my um ideas about spirituality um you know preposterous and uh you know not 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 fitting with, you know, in the neat, neat boxes of religion. Um, and then there's places and a lot of people that I can't be my wild adrenaline junkie, crazy ass fun person who literally instigates all kinds of mischief. And then there's the, the professional me that I can't, you know, I mean, I don't, I leave that and I reserve that for work. And it's kind of a theme in my life is just the calm compartmentalizing things and it's not just like my personality but it's feelings too and i think it's um i think it's a self-protective mechanism so it's a sub so the sub personality is 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 all different parts of me that i don't bring out everywhere i don't i mean i don't sit at home and and have this 
just thing that happens inside my head. It's, it's, an, it's an action. It's an action personality, and it's many of them, I think. Um, and uh, I found that book at a garage sale a couple years ago for like 25 cents and I bought it just because I was like, I'm gonna have this stupid thing in my house because you know what? I, I'm not a, really afraid to tell anybody who I am. I just really just, I just don't wanna deal with people that don't enjoy that part of my personality. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and as we're celebrating you, Kat, I want to celebrate your dad and his wisdom, right? And his foresight. What beautiful foresight on the part of your father, you know? So, um, you know, I'm just getting to know Kat, but you've led such an extraordinary life and you've done so many different things that are seemingly diverse. And so I just want to acknowledge all those different parts of you. Um, and, and your ability and willingness to go for it, regardless of what other people may think, that you haven't allowed yourself to stay boxed into one way of being, one, one persona. So, big twinkling. You've got two minutes left. Would you like empathy, reflection, celebration? You're muted. I guess really, I know, I mean, if there's people that can relate, I'd like to hear that, you know, that other people have, you know, that, you know, have relatable type experiences. Um, and in, in feedback, if anybody has feedback, I'm welcome to that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Would like to, would like to, Mimi. And then Anna Prabha. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Um, first of all, full, I celebrate the fact that you're showing up here and talking about all of those like little pieces of yourself. And my second quick uh, little denotion is the idea that um, really surrounding yourself with people who really encapsulate the fullness of themselves and getting out like at that level, because I think there's a, I've talked to a lot of the people here who are all kind of in that space of, Oh my gosh, I feel exhausted because I've traveled so long to find people like you who, who bring it all together. So I really see that and celebrate that about you. Mm. There you go. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you. Thank you. Ana Prabha. Yeah, hi, Kat. Um, I hi. really relate to the, the, uh, the need to feel you have to compartmentalize yourselves. And I, I think just as women, you know, we have such a, a you know, the, the, we have such a huge past of being of not being able to be ourselves. It wasn't ever safe to be ourselves. So, um, you know, really, you know, we were burned as witches, we're tortured, you know, even with husbands, it's not safe, really, you know, we're always with men, it's like, is it okay to say this yet? Is it okay? You know, so I just want to really, um, well, I, I have, I feel that as well. I've experienced having to feel like I have to compartmental myself or not be too excited about something or too joyful about something or too happier or too smart about something maybe. And so I, even running this band that at all men, you know, how to, how I relate with them. So I really uh, can understand that need, your need for compartmentalize. And I, and I just want to, um, yeah, kind of share that sister camaraderie with that. And I guess give, um, us the courage, both of us and all the sisters, you know, to really, and using these tools to really, you know, put out more kind of bring out these scared selves, you know, you know, and find, find a safe group of people, like, for example, us <laughs> to do it with, you know, because what I found working with Scott these years, um, this has allowed me to really uh, an insight into my inner world, which was very fearful to ever talk about and to really start sharing and to be, once you get the empathy and understanding and nobody freaks out, it's like, and you've realized other people feel that same way and do the same things. It just helps to expand your soul and your heart and your strength and your, your, your courage. So, and I can see you're really courageous. So I celebrate you being here and you sharing, sharing your, your uh, fears and concerns. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ana Prabha. Thank you. All right, um, we move on. And 
you know, I do want to say that not everybody has to speak. You know, um, I prefer not to call on people, um, but I do encourage everybody not to be shy. And, uh, I think we've all seen that it's been really rich what everybody has shared, and hopefully it's been valuable for those of you who've shared. You know, to, to have the chance to express this part of yourself and to get feedback. So, um, who would like to go next that we haven't heard from? Daniel. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, wow, the shares have been really deep and rich for me. Um, I have been immersed in a, an African, West African drum and dance retreat for the last five days and really pushing myself um, to play a part that is, is heard over everybody else. And so when I screw it up, it's obvious. And so the, uh, you know, the conductor, he, there's like 50 people he's um, organizing, dancers and marimba players and all kinds of drummers. And so, you know, um, I thought I had the part and he's like, no, Daniel, you're slowing us all down. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, okay. Um, my, then my, you know, my inner critic, critical Daniel, uh, shows up immediately. Like, see, you can't do anything right. You might as well not even try. And I'm like, no, I got this. I got this. And so I, I just picked it up again and, um, and I, I got it right that time and got the approval from him. He's like, okay, now you got it. All right. Um, and, um, and then it happened again. And then my critic's like, oh no, this time I'm taking over. And what I, what I do is, and <laughs> I go into my own world and, um, and try to figure it out or protect myself. And then he's like, he says, Daniel, you're in your own world. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> like, totally busted for me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I had this interesting play and, and dance with this subpersonality of mine that I can't, you know, do anything right. And why even try? And I'm, I'm really proud and happy with, with how I was interacting with this subpersonality because I kept recognizing that it was coming forward and then having conversations with the other drummers around me about it because they understood it and have it. And um, yeah, I, I'm just would like to just like honor my self. I feel like I, I developed a new level of self-trust and courage and ability in, and, and that I'm capable and that you know, even if I screw it up, that that's, it's okay. You know, I'm trying and I am actually improving. So yeah, that, that's, I don't know if what this, the, the fun name would be of that sub personality, um, but maybe that could be part of the, the feedback I get. So, Beautiful. <sighs> thank you. That's all Twinkle Daniel. And thank you for the vulnerability of that. Mm. Um, I'd love to open it up to someone else to offer thoughts, reflection. Maybe someone we haven't heard so much from, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Anybody? Aaron, I saw a, a finger creep up there, Aaron. <laughs> like a little finger. Yeah, Daniel, I so appreciate you, man. I just want to say, I feel like we've all been in that position where we're in that lead position, and it just... Uh, you know, like you described, wasn't received in the most um, welcome way, if you will. So yeah, just relating and uh, appreciating your, your vulnerability to share that and uh, want to recognize you for showing up to be there and to mm. give your gifts and yeah, at the risk of that sort of critique or that sort of commentary. And uh, I feel like we all just relate so much that way in life. You know, when we come mm -hmm. to 
place of leadership where you're setting the pace and you're, you're the loudest guy in the group. And um, yeah, so I just want to appreciate you showing up and holding space for that reflection. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Anyone else? Deborah. Yeah, Daniel. You, you know, I, I see somebody who's really excellent in many things that you do. You know, mm. I think you're a leader and I think you're a psychologist and um, you have a lot of a lot of skills. So then you are willing to put yourself in this you know, this, uh, inv this situation where in drumming, because I have been in drum classes and in dance stuff too, where it is very specific and very highly refined and you have to be on rhythm there. And so, you know, you're, you're challenging yourself at a whole new level. So I want to acknowledge that, you know, really that you bring your excellence to a new place where you have to learn and grow and be vulnerable and you're willing to be there but but i see the dichotomy of you know your superstar or excellence person and then i would be curious i i would love for you to name this character that's thinking oh i fucked up you know i i, I didn't do it right uh, and and let your almost your inner child just name that character. Like, what's the most vulnerable name you could give that character? Hmm. Thank you. Hmm. Um. And it might even have your name attached to it. It might be something, Daniel. Right. The. Uh... Hmm. I'm having a blockage. Yeah, so, so why don't we do this? Yeah. If anybody has suggestions, put it into the chat box. Thanks. Yeah, and we can but do I it that way. I just want to complete that, just to wrap that up, that, that I, I see definitely this experience of yours is against a, a, on a canvas of excellence, you know? So it's wonderful that you challenge yourself to keep expanding and growing. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Deborah. Deborah. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Deborah. One more twinkling for everybody there. And who's next? We've got a few people we haven't heard from Ali, Mandy, Debbie, or Christopher yet. I think everybody else. Yeah, everybody else is gone. So, do any of you want to share? Ali, Mandy, Debbie, or Christopher? Go Debbie. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so a big one for me um, would be basically a chameleon sub-personality uh, in the way of social environments and mm, trying to like ascertain the tributes of the people that I'm around and then morph to them myself to be more liked by the people around me because I have a deep-seated fear of them not liking me and not being accepted. So that is a, that's a huge one for me. It's short, but, uh, <laughs> but to the point. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of my big sub personalities is the chameleon. And just a quick question. What would you say are the character strengths of your chameleon? What are his virtues? Well, adaptability for sure. Um, I guess given the nature of it, um, which, you know, uh, putting that in practice, I suppose has given me a lot more malleability in my character which is not a bad thing um but it, it does become a bad thing when uh when i do less than desirable things to accomplish the goal of uh of fitting in and i suppose that's what my initial point was i wasn't really thinking about positive aspects of it but that is uh that is good that's a good way to think about it um you know especially yeah. in work environments that whole chameleon ability has gotten me far so yeah. Yeah. So just remember, everybody, that all of our subpersonalities do have character strengths. And especially if it's a subpersonality that we have judgment around, we've kept it stuffed in the shadow, 
what's the character strengths? What are the virtues? What is this? What are the gifts that this set personality has for you? Right? And that might be something again that we can offer reflections, like just looking at Dan, uh, Daniel, who just went. My thought was the vulnerable part would be insecure Daniel, and therefore the the character strength cultivated is courage. The courage to be in a drumming circle, even though that's not something he's strong at. So looking at what are the character strengths that are cultivated within these sub-personalities of ourself. And as coaches, when we're working with people, it's a very good place to go. It's a good place to go in helping people to, to accept themselves that much more. Anybody wanna, uh, what would you like, um, Christopher, would you like reflection, empathy, understanding, celebration? What would you like? Well, that reflection would be cool. Okay, who'd like to, maybe some people we haven't heard from so much, I'd like to give some reflection to Christopher. Don't be shy. Oh my gosh, come on, you guys. Okay, uh, I'll give I'll give Christopher a reflection. <laughs> I was Thanks, holding Debbie. off because I'm mom. Right. <laughs> okay, but um, and what's funny is that I've been sitting here thinking about that chameleon was my, I used to say all the time in business, I was a chameleon. You know, I keeping my personality fluctuating depending on you don't want to go too far up or too far down or, you know, whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, Christopher, I, I think that your ability to understand other people and meet them where they're at is probably the biggest thing. Um, the biggest attribute of being that chameleon you know we can meet because you know how to adjust that so that you can make people feel warm and welcome in your presence so um i appreciate that about you and i know what it feels like to do that you watched me do it you know and and if you recall dad, yeah. dad had a nickname for you chameleon chameleon her middle name is Anne. <laughs> he meant it in a uh I think less kind-hearted way, but I really like how you're owning it. And I like that. Yeah. Well, you know, when you shift, okay, so you guys ever meet somebody new and then you start dating them and you start taking on some of those like things they dig doing a big one. Well, okay. I started dating Dennis and I hated country music. Oh my God. Mm. Like my kids knew I don't like, this is just not part of my thing, but he did. So then I start, I shifted and started appreciating country my kids are going where the heck did this mother come from she wasn't the mother we knew a few weeks ago i was adopting the other person's uh, some of the other person's stuff to to bring that commonality into our relationship you know um obviously there weren't huge commonalities so i created some okay so uh but yeah so i just really christopher that's there's a really good way of, I love how that Scott brought forward the positive part of how to look at that aspect. We spend so much time looking at what's wrong with us and we've spent our life doing that and it's beautiful now to start looking at what's good about us. Yeah. And what's good about you and you know, your ability to bring people to a space of ease is just like that quick. Mm. So you have a deep understanding of, of, of people and you've got a big heart and I love that about you. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome, baby. Yeah, I mean, in my time getting to know you, Christopher, living in the house here with us, you're an incredibly diverse talent. I mean, it's really interesting to see whether it's building the hen temple or re <laughs> reconstructing our webpage. Um, you know, you have a really wide variety of talents. And uh, anyway, I think that's part of the chameleon virtues as well. All right, Twinkling, Christopher and Debbie. And while the spotlight's on you, Debbie, do you want to share your sub-personality a little bit more? Do you want to share a little bit more about what came up for you? Um, well, hmm. Really, it was kind of the, the I, I've always coined it the chameleon and not because your dad said to, but it's always felt that way. Um, I always wanted to be accepted. And so when I was little, I was always bigger than everybody else. I mean, my granddaughter is just about five feet tall. She just turned seven and that's how I was. So I was always adjusting my personality to not be bigger in the personality than I was in the body. You know, to try to get myself 
you know, I wanted to be seen, but not seen. I wanted to be seen for me, not for just because I'm the first thing you're going to see when I walk in a room, you know? And so there was a, and um, there was that part of that personality that was there and it followed me throughout life, you know? So. I can relate. You can definitely relate. He's six foot seven. Yeah. But I, I think for girls, I mean, it wasn't just about the height though. I mean, it was about acceptance when kids were playing. I, I wasn't good at sports. I was good in theater. I wasn't good in what everybody else was doing. I was good at what I did. And that was playing guitar or stuff like that. It wasn't, and so I wasn't the, the same as they were. So I think that's might be where I adopted a lot of, um, of shifting like some of my likes and dislikes in order to have that commonality with people because I didn't find a lot of commonality, you know, and a lot of that connection. So, and I love people so much. So yeah, I would just sort of take on this or that or more liking this. Like I remember thinking to myself, when did I first start liking the monkeys? Oh, that was like back when Deanne was loving the monkeys and then I decided I, I like the monkeys. But I really do like the monkeys, but they're not that damn good. They were just kind of funny and it's sort of a, thing or <laughs> well, I mean really or you know but there were fun experiences with it but but yeah taking on others uh uh likes and dislikes to make it just a more comparable situation I we have that same trait definitely beautiful so what comes up to mind as I hear about the subpersonality of the chameleon is a longing for acceptance and a longing for inclusion. So again, we look at what are the character strengths, and we also look at the longings of the heart. So I'm just really feeling with a lot of compassion, the longing for inclusion, the longing for acceptance, the longing to be loved, to fit in, yeah. Anybody wanna add any thoughts or reflections? Anybody else wanna move on? Or? I do. Great, Kat. Yeah, I just have to give you just a, a prop there. Um, just your honesty, Deb, and, um, and your self-awareness is really neat. And coming from another six-foot woman, I'm telling you, I understand. I understand. Very cool. Mm, thank you, Kat. Thank you, thank Stuart. You. Yeah. All right, Daniel. Yeah, I wanted to say something to you, Christopher. Um, I wrote something in the chat box too, but um, I too, you know, I tune into people's energies and feelings and their thoughts. And I often have found myself like attuning myself to the people I'm around. And um, I also have beat myself up over things that actually have another perspective to look at myself, you know? But, you know, what I've discovered is that, wow, since I have that ability, that now it, it's more important for me to choose the people I want to be around and the people I want to be like. And so I can be around people I want to be like and then use that to build my character. That's cool. Yeah, right on. Beautiful, beautiful comment, Kirtman, thank you. All right, um, still haven't heard from Ali or Mandy. Uh, would either of you like to share what has come up for you? Mandy. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. And we can see Israel in the back as well. <laughs> Um, well, I pretty much shared my sub personalities pretty out there and bluntly last time. And, um, honestly, my shadow side really needs love and empathy and, um, understanding, tolerance, patience, compassion. And, uh, yeah. Since you did share so deeply on Saturday, is there anything in the few days between Saturday and now as you've thought about it, any reflections, any self-awareness, any way that, that expressing it 
in group and looking at it has helped you? Um, I don't know about that, but just feeling like I'm feeling emotional just talking about it. There's just so much shame and guilt about the shadow work and not just in my own circle, but in society and just wishing that there was more love and compassion and understanding for what I do and the beauty that can be found in it and the deep healing that is provided. I just wish more people could understand. And how that's needed. the world needs it. Not just needs it. It needs to be talked about and understood and accepted and stuff. So let's just really all feel into the beauty of the longing for acceptance. And we talked about that a moment ago with Christopher, but isn't that true for almost all of our sub-personalities? Just this incredible longing for acceptance, leaving the world of right and wrong, good and bad. Scott? And remember that's as love coaches and most, yeah, yes? Can I request empathy from you? Sure. Hmm. <clears throat> so Mandy, I'm imagining that knowing you as I do and knowing that your life is dedicated to kindness. You are so dedicated to kindness that you're willing to put on your angel wings, go out into the world, go to places where you could easily be judged to promote kindness. And underneath kindness is just this profound universal spiritual principle of acceptance and compassion. That is kindness in action. And so I'm imagining that when you're judged, when you experience being judged, when you experience being made wrong, when you aren't seen clearly for who you are, it's really devastating. It's really, really hard because you promote so much kindness. And of course, we promote that which we long for. We long for it in the world and we long for it with ourselves. So I just want to acknowledge the judgment in this world that takes place, especially around certain parts of our, of our beautiful intimacy. And I just imagine how hard it is for you, one of the kindest people I know, dedicated to kindness when you're not experiencing being when you're not experiencing kindness towards you. The opposite of that, criticism or judgment. How hard that must be. And I am so grateful for your presence in our world. And I'm really grateful about your presence in Love Coach Academy. I was just telling Emily, Mandy's going to be an amazing love coach. She's awesome. I was just telling Emily that yesterday. So. Thank you. It's all twinkle, Mandy. And Israel in the background, her beloved. All right. Um, Allie, are you willing to share with us? I'm sure. Um... And, and, you know, Mandy, I just wanted to say, too, I'm just holding so much love and compassion for you right now. Uh, I can, in, in the brief time I've been doing these classes, I can see clearly how empathetic you and everyone are. And when it, you have such a beautiful heart, everyone does. And, you know, just holding lots of love and space for you right now. Um, 
you know, for me, like, like I was saying a little bit on Saturday, you know, I have a, a tougher than steel persona, you know, Miss Independence, I don't need anybody except myself. Um, and, and it hadn't occurred to me that there are actually good sides to that until, until you just said that, Scott, um, you know, because it does teach you resilience and independence. Um, you know, I've always had to make it, it, it was born from just having to rely on myself because growing up the way that I did without, you know, uh, support or compassion or what I needed, you know, and having to, having to find my way out of situations that I sometimes be in either through my own creation or things beyond my control, um, you know, that, that drives that. I've also been told repeatedly I'm not fooling anybody but myself with that nonsense, um, you know, that I don't need anybody because it is a huge um, defense mechanism. I was also just sitting and reflecting on some of my own shadow sides. I'm aware that, especially in my line of work, you know, I'm aware that I'm easy to underestimate and I'm aware that I like that very very much because that way when i am feeling threatened or when i need to pull out that that side of me that comes you know i'll play i'll roll over and seemingly play dead but in reality you know i'll come popping up and be like boom you know all of a sudden it um you know it's like wait a minute where did that come from you know catch people off balance and you know, I, I've had to do that in my line of work a few times, and it's just, you know, I was just sitting, reflecting on that, but yeah, at the same, and there's always the dichotomy going on, too, because, it, you know, at the same time in the brief time that I've been doing the, these classes, learning about myself and releasing some old trauma, it, it's showing me that gradually one day it will be safe to love again. And I'm not there yet, I'm working on it, but just even knowing that it is possible is like huge, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So let's just all hold the vision for Allie, knowing that absolutely it will be safe to attract the right, the right love in maybe many forms, right? Uh, including a romantic partner, but whatever forms. Love, life, God, whatever you want to call it, can come to us in many, many forms. Just blessing you with that vision. Would you like empathy, reflection, celebration, anything else? Um, I'm open to all of it. <laughs> okay. Who's uh, Mimi? Thank you so much. I'm feeling that really in my heart space with you about how you've become so great at caring for yourself and really starting with keeping everything at a distance to be able to take a look at everything in a genuine light. And then how I really see that you're, even through this group, how you're slowly starting to like say yes to things and no to things. Like saying yes to the, to the pieces and bringing those back into your heart space and really cherishing those. And then your ability to be able to say no and and really quickly walk away from things that aren't working for you anymore. So I just wanted to celebrate that part of you because I see how much you're showing up in wanting and developing more language for what is a really easy yes for you and what is a really easy no thank you for you. So I celebrate that and I see a lot more volume for you. Beautiful, Mimi. Thank Beautiful. You. Anyone else? Anybody else? Okay. All right, one more twinkle then for Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. And thank you everybody for sharing. So in wrapping up, um, I want to uh, just kind of go over kind of our schedule and what's coming up. Uh, this Saturday will be our last Saturday of this round of the course. Then we will have some special events on Saturdays and then 
the Relationship Essentials course will begin on uh, Saturday, February 29th. So this Saturday is the last Saturday, and it's going to be kind of a, a review of what we've learned and a chance to kind of bring, celebrate what everybody's learned and answer any significant questions that you might have. So I hope you can all join it. Then a week from tonight, Wednesday night, Paul Sterling, who's a good friend of mine and a, a frequent collaborator, and I are going to talk with those of you who are interested in making your living as a love coach about some ways to do that. And we're going to talk a little bit about marketing options. So any of you, people like Mandy, Anupraba, Debbie Garcia, and others that want to make your living, Deborah Haviland, want to make your living uh, as a love coach, especially they really are needed in Florida. I hear that there's not enough love coaches in Florida. Um, uh, definitely want to make sure you join us on Wednesday night. Um, I still need to connect with most of you about uh, kind of uh, where we are. We're going to start the Relationship Essentials course, and then I am wanting to work with between six and ten people deeply in a, a, a love coach mentorship program. And if you're interested in the mentorship program, it's going to be on a separate day and night. It's not going to be on Saturday mornings or Wednesday night. It'll be once the six to 10 people have been selected, then we'll all kind of just decide what a good time would be. And um, I know that a couple of you have said that you're interested in it. I've said, yes, I definitely am interested, but we still need to have our conversation. I'll put into the... Um, the Love Coach Academy uh, Facebook feed, uh, the links where you can, again, get details on relationship essentials, details on the mentorship program. And if you're interested in one or the other, please private message me, private message me, and we'll set up a time to talk in the next week. All right. I want to thank Debbie and Christopher. I want to, I'm going to put the spotlight on them because they have done a wonderful job of creating marketing materials and going into the web page and creating our affiliate program. That's very, very important to talk about to all of you. We have an affiliate program where you can all make 20% commission for referring people to either program, either course. And so if you have questions about the affiliate program, you can private message me or Debbie um, or Chris, um, or just go to relationshipessentials.org and it says become an affiliate and just click on that link. And there's, there's a whole booklet that we've got and a lot of details about how to become an affiliate. And um, Debbie, is there anything you want to add about that? Um, yeah. It, well, first I want to say thanks to Allie and we have, a, I have a couple, Mandy, you've already signed up. Yay. So if you have any questions, just go sign up and then message me, say, Hey, I signed up and I'll make sure that you have the right link that you need to be sharing out. Um, you share that link so that it's all tracked to you and you can get the credit for it. 20% is quite awesome. Most affiliates are not. So, um, just just, let, just hit me up personally if you have any issues at all and I'll help you with it, okay? Um, and I'm super excited to see who is gonna jump on board with us on the affiliate because the more of us that are sharing in community, um, the more of, the, the bigger the word can be. It, the best advertising around is word of mouth. Um, plus, we wanna bring as many awesome people into this community as we can because we're teaching about these wonderful, uh, beautiful skills and how to communicate. So I love you guys and um, just let me know what kind of help you need. I'll be right there with you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Debbie, thank you. And yeah, I just wanna say that, you know, some of you um, have gotten a significant discount or been gifted into this course that we've been doing since October. And really the greatest way to pay it back is to really put some time and energy into talking personally to the people you know who really want to have better relationships. And it's nice to post it on your wall, but really for something like this, it requires telling them how this course has changed your life, how it's transformed your life, and really taking the time to talk to them and refer them to us. And uh, Debbie and I are willing to do free 15, 20 minute consultations with people that are sincerely interested in taking the next course. 
We want them to get to know us. We want them to meet us. And we want them to sign up and pay for it because it's worth it. So I just, I'm claiming that. Subpersonality, Scott, is yes, we want the next course to have 30 paid people along with some of you as love coaches coming back and guiding them and helping to teach the classes. So that's what I want. All right, you guys. Um, thank you all for incredible sharing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sharing from the heart. I'm looking forward to seeing you all on Saturday and have a great few days between now and then. Namaste.